coach. Time. We're on uh, look, we're on live here. Okay. Uh, awesome. Really good. Great. Okay. Uh, we just got another uh, uh, another commit here, and uh, we'll talk about him in one second. But uh, how do you feel about this quarterback class? You went from you know a couple to five. Yeah, it's exciting. You know, it's an exciting time right now. We've got we'll have a great competition. We'll have four guys here this spring. You know, with Ryan and Steven and then Preston and Gray, and then we'll add an additional guy in June with David Thompson. So with five guys all on scholarship, all competing with one another, it should be a lot of fun. Okay, one thing that I've been saying about this group is that I love, forget even on the field, is nobody's afraid to compete. You can tell by how many you're, how many you sign. Yeah. I mean, everybody wanted to be here. They want to compete. They want to be the quarterback at the U. It's really exciting. You know, I, I think it's the... It's such an easy sell to tell somebody why they should come to the University of Miami. I mean, I play quarterback. They've got an opportunity to be at the, one of the top universities that is quarterback you. And we're going to bring that back. And every one of those guys, there was no concern about other people in their class signing. They didn't even think about it. They just said, I want to play quarterback at the University of Miami, and I'm going to come. Well, we got a lot to talk about with those quarterbacks. But you just uh, another fax has just come across, and another wide receiver. This one is Robert Lockhart uh, from Delray Beach. He's 6'1", 180 pounds. Uh, was at Fort Union Military Academy. Uh, this was a win against another school, and another guy that adds depth to Herb Waters and uh, Angelo John Louis and Damari Jones and John Pavius Carter. This is a well of a wide receiver class. Yeah, and um, as you know, you know we have a situation where um, we lost some wide receivers, so we have an opportunity now to re to get our program uh, back to where we want it to be. We want to put eight or nine wide receivers in. And uh, so we had to, you know, we signed that number this year. And uh, five or six guys we're going to end up signing. And it, Robert Lockhart is a stud athlete. He is an unbelievable explosive player. When you see the ball in his hands, you watch him fly. Uh, he can get in and out of his cuts. He can, get, uh, he can catch the ball extremely well. And you could actually really see the athleticism show up on film. You know what I know is this, sorry, Don, no. is that there is a player named uh, J. Ron Hosley who ended up as a competitor against Miami. And he was from Delray Beach. <laughs> and Robert Lockhart almost ended up as a competitor from Delray Beach, and that is no more because you guys got him. Yeah, we did, and we're excited to get that competition going. When you look at these wide receivers, and you're going to have to get help out of these freshmen this year, no ifs, ands, or buts, what's the first thing that you tell them, if they're, if they're not enrolled now, that they've got to do to be as close to game ready as they can be when summer school starts? Well, Don, I'll tell you this. They have to be ready to compete, and they have to be ready to play. So between now and summer school, they better not realize, they better not think that it's a vacation. And they better not think they can go back to their ways of maybe hanging out uh, your final spring semester of your senior year. Because when they walk on this campus, there's expectations. And there's expectations of them to be able to go out there and start opening day. And they're gonna be, they better go compete. And so whether it be in the weight room, whether it be on the track, whether it be catching footballs, whether it be finding their high school quarterback, or if they're within a certain radius coming on our campus. Uh, we need to get them here, and they need to get to wherever they need to be to become great because they need to be able to compete. Coach, to take the, the freshman quarterbacks, you have two of them in that are going to be a part of spring practice for you. Where do you start with them? What, what is, what's, the first, what's the first lesson plan for the quarterback? That you're in? Well, I think the first thing is we have to really assess where they're at. Um, it's almost like you have to give them a pretest uh, and see where they place and see exactly where their fundamentals are. We need to see where they are with their football acumen. We have to see where they are in terms of understanding the, what we're looking to get done at the position and then what they can do. Uh, the benefit, obviously, is we know what Steven can do, and we have a pretty good feeling for what Ryan can do. So with these other two guys, they're going to be evaluated from the very first time they walk on the field. The exciting part of those guys is that they're really getting evaluated every day by their peers. And every time that they go out there and do anything with just their own teammates, uh, those teammates are watching them, they're coaching them, they're helping them. And I think they're building more and more confidence. So when the coaches arrive, uh, they're ready for it. I want to pick up on, on Don's point because I think one of the exciting things for you in the second year of the offense is Stephen Morris now, uh, when you call the play, you don't have to break each part of the play down for him. It's, it's automatic. So you have, you have that working for you, yet you need to balance it with this, the young guys, right? What kind of job is that going to be for you? You know, I, I think that's that's exactly right. I, I can't wait to watch how the offense can grow in year two. And I don't mean grow in terms of how much more volume we can add. 
I mean grow in terms of how much more efficient we can be. So the biggest, the biggest question mark and the best test that we'll have is how much can our young guys absorb with our veteran leadership? And now it's not just coaches coaching players, it's players coaching players because now the players that have been here understand what we're trying to get done and can do it. And when you look at your offense and the way that you build it, you've done, you did a phenomenal job of building it around what players can do. It's not what Jed Fish wants to do. You've built it around what these players can do. And that, that's from the whole line of scrimmage to the running game and the receivers as well. You do your evaluation on what can we do successfully. There's no question. And our, our philosophy and really what the coaches challenge is from February 6th, from a little bit of a break that we're going to have from today till February 6th, and then from February 6th till February 28th, it's going to be up to the offensive coaches to put together a plan on what our players can do, what we think they can achieve, what, where we can get the ball to score, whose hands do we get the ball to, and that's how we're going to build the offense for this year. So it might look different. It might look different than it did last year, but it's certainly going to be what we think our players can do best. I want to come back to uh, scoring in a moment, but let's uh, go through a couple of these guys. Uh, Herb Waters, you get him from Homestead and return kicks. Really good with the football after the catch. Well, what did you see in him? Yeah, one of the things you saw with Herb is that uh, up until this year, he played a lot of quarterback. So you saw, and it was a you know running system. So you saw him with the ball in his hand a lot. You saw him making moves a lot. You saw him sticking his foot in the ground a lot. Then this year, we saw him play wide receiver and catch the ball and then see what his run after catch looks like. So I think he's a dynamic player and somebody that we know that uh, once he touches the ball, there's going to be a lot of yards after the catch, which we need. Coach, David Thompson is, is a, a special kid, you know, from yeah. Westminster Christian, and I had a chance to, to meet a lot of people down there, and Joe and I talked earlier in the show about everybody wants to talk about what a great kid he is. Everybody wants to talk about what a great leader he is. If you start looking at really what he's accomplished, 30 touchdown passes, uh, or 20 touchdown passes, excuse me, 11 more added in the running game, and then... You don't even want to look at the baseball side of it because of what a great athlete he is. It's, it's really a, it's, it's a funny uh, situation with him because you're right. Everybody wants to talk about his personality and they want to talk about the type of guy he is and 4.0 GPA and all that. And then you look at the fact that he broke Prince Fielder's home run record. He broke A-Rod's home run record. <laughs> He's Mr. All Day two years in a row. And there's some good athletes in Dade County. And uh, he was the athlete of the year two years in a row of Dade County. He can dunk a basketball. He can throw a football everywhere and anywhere you want it to go. He's a tremendous athlete. He can do a ton of great things. And uh, we're thrilled to watch uh, what he can do and see how uh, he can help our program. All, All right. of that. Demari Jones, wide receiver at Leesburg. Another nice looking player. Yeah, you're talking about a guy six three and a half. Yeah. You know, and uh, I mean, he'll probably be playing at somewhere between 205 and 208. So if you got a guy at six three and a half, over 200 pounds, that can run well and uh, make some big-time ball plays. You know, he's going to be special for us. He's going to be able to maybe fill the role of what Tommy Streeter was able to do for us in terms of the one-on-one -on -one matchups and uh, be able to put him out. He and uh, John Davis Carter are guys that you would put out there as, you know, like the X wide receiver and say, okay, it's a one-on-one. -on -one. Now let's see if you can uh, have that jump ball. Coach, you, you have to constantly fill spots on the offensive line. Uh, this year, and I've talked about it, numerous times, it's rare that you're able to get three offense alignment at this point from Dayton Broward County. It's a, Dayton Broward County just normally don't produce that type of talent that's D1 ready, but you go and close the gap. But you, as much fun as it is for us to talk about the quarterbacks and receivers, you got to get the big uglies in there to help oh, move the football. Without those guys, it really is not going to matter, right, what we do and, you know, what type of scheme we may or may not be able to come up with. Uh, to have Eric Flowers here early is huge, to be able to get him as an early enrollee. Uh, Dap Taylor get Wa here early is huge for us. So you're talking about two early enrollees that have um, made it. Now I don't know if the other offensive linemen are we able to speak of them that have made it in. Uh, Danny is a door. Okay, good. Danny is a door is in. So we're talking about a powerful guard, someone that's really going to be able to handle the interior part of the line for us. So we got two tackles, you know, with Eric and Taylor. You got a guard with um, Danny. So you know we're in great shape there. I think we're uh, excited to see Chantrell and see what he can bring for us now that, you know, we really have to count him as a new player still because we've never really seen him go a whole season for us. And uh, we're really excited about him coming out of uh, spring and, you know, hopefully going into spring he's going to have a great year. And uh, then, of course, Malcolm Bunch.
Yeah, well, Bunch is somewhat new too. Bunch I mean, he's young. Seen, he's dinged up the whole year as well. And then, of course, there were, and Shane McDermott is going to be having his first opportunity at center. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, um, well, with Brandon Linder, you know, you know that you've got somebody that's uh, been there and done that now for a year, and uh, really, he's done a tremendous job. You just, you just added to your defense, by the way, Dion Bush. Safety from Columbus High School, that put a smile on your face. Yeah, we get to score seven less points, I think. <laughs> or the other team does when we, uh, when we kick it off. And then uh, your defensive line just got a little bit bigger, too, 295 pounds bigger, with Earl Moore, defensive tackle out of Tampa. So you go over to Tampa and had some success over there here today with uh, Tyreek McCord, Earl Moore from Tampa, and, of course, the quarterback, Gray Crow. But uh, Dion Bush is a well player. Yeah, well, Coach Denofer and I keep making jokes back and forth that every time we sign a defensive player, I say, oh, I can leave the office early. And uh, every time we sign an offensive player, he says he can let up more points. So we have a nice running joke, uh, both of us, on that. And uh, I think the fact of the matter is that um, the team is getting better. The team is really improving. And uh, what they're, what, uh, they're going to do on defense, I can't wait to watch it. And I think what we're going to do on offense is uh, going to be something special as well. And uh, with these players that are coming in, it's going to be a, it's going to be a fun year. When you put the stakes in the ground and you're trying to to, to capture your audience, the, you know the eye of the hurricane audience, you, you take a Dion Bush who was, you know, arguably defensively one of the marquee players in Dade County, and he's a Miami guy. I mean, he could he could have gone anywhere in the country twice, yep. and he chose the U, and, and that's a big get. Yeah, I think we're going to have a few guys that are uh, in that situation, um, that uh, in the eye. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, those guys are going to make a enormous difference. And really what it does, it shows the brand of the University of Miami. That the University of Miami is far bigger than any one thing. And that uh, what the University of Miami has been able to accomplish over the last 30 years uh, is just going to continue to improve, continue to get better. And uh, where, where we continue to thrive academically, we're going to continue to thrive athletically as well. Uh, Preston Dewey, we talked about him earlier, Don, and I said, uh, Don mentioned he was coached by Ty Detmer, and I said, well, Detmer owes Miami one because he knocked us out of being ranked number one in the country in 1990 out in BYU when he threw for a bunch of yards and touchdowns. But So you know Dewey's been well coached and played at a high level. Yeah. Uh, I, told, I actually told Preston and his family, I said, you know, we're really thrilled to have you here. You, I'll be the second best coach you have ever had. So, <laughs> you know, uh, the opportunity for... For a guy to be coached by a Heisman Trophy winner, you know, that's fantastic. That doesn't happen very often, right? So for, for that opportunity that Preston had um, in high school is uh, something special. It's something to build on. He understands the game. They did a really uh, – Ty's done a great job with him, really getting him ready for here, you know. And uh, what we do is very similar to what uh, Coach Detmer has done with the NFL teams he was uh, a part of. And uh, I think Preston's going to come in here and be able to compete, and I don't think anything's too big for Preston right now. Coach, you talk about the brand. You know, you, you hop into the state of Texas and pull out a brand name quarterback that, that was highly recruited. That's a pat on the back for the University of Miami. No question. And uh, that was the first uh, comment that was made by his family, uh, that it was, uh, we've got an opportunity to go to University of Miami. We appreciate the other uh, universities that have recruited him, and there were many of them, and there were many offers out there. But he said, his dad said, when I was growing up, everybody dreamed of playing at the University of Miami, and I believe that's what it's going to be again. So it was a pretty cool uh, thing to hear. You mentioned, uh, Coach, uh, earlier that uh, coming up here in the next week after some time off, you guys will be diving into the players and the playbook. Yeah. mentioned scoring. What do you see? What, what are some of the ideas you might be trying to cook up? And, in the trends in college football, what would be important for you to get into the end zone? What, what do you see? Uh, teams doing even more to get to the end zone. Well, the most important thing that you guys will uh, hear about all spring and uh, give you guys a, an early nugget. Uh, we like that. We're going to have to um, push our tempo and our idea. We, we want to get more plays run. Uh, we feel like we had a uh, very successful year in terms of our yards per play, but we'd like to have more plays. And uh, so one of the things that we're going to dive into this, uh, this spring is how can we get that done. And some of that should